if you use a Canon DSLR camera or a Canon mirrorless camera, I have bad news for you because as of late, Canon cameras can now be hacked with ransomware remotely. Let's take it out. Hey name tags and welcome this is Ash from Hill Tech and if you want to unleash your true potential start by subscribing enable the bell notification icon so I can help you go from newbie to techie and if there's any Amazon links in the description below please use them to support the channel. So this terrible news for Canon users across the globe is since 6 August 2019 Canon released an official post on their website all the links will be below in the description according to their official statement an international team of security researchers found some vulnerabilities vulnerability regarding their PTP which is the picture transfer protocol whether you're using a Wi-Fi or a USB for transfer. They've outlined six specific firmware updates where these vulnerability were found. So which cameras are actually affected? If you look at the list from Canon's website, that is a long list. Anything from the EOS series digital SLR and some mirrorless cameras, namely the PowerShot SX70HS, the PowerShot SX740HS and the PowerShot G5X Mark II. But as far as the EOS series is concerned, anything from the EOS 1DX to the 1DX Mark II to the 70D, the 80D, the 300D, the 1300D, which I used to own, to the EOS M100 and the EOS R series. That is a lot. If you use one of these cameras or you've used them in the past or you're considering buying them, let me know in the comments below and also let me know what are your thoughts right now before you even get to the end of this video. Now, since 6th of August 2019, they have also released some updated firmware. So first, I'm going to tell you what they have advised to do. Number one is to ensure the suitability of security related settings of the devices connected to the camera, such as the PC, mobile device and router being used. What that means is if you're going to connect your DSLR camera or mirrorless camera to a computer or laptop or smartphone, then you have to make sure that those devices themselves have security within them, which protect from viruses and spyware and that these devices in and of themselves are security updated. Number two, they advise not to connect the camera to a PC or mobile device that is being used in an unsecured network, such as in a free Wi-Fi environment, which means you can't use this in an airport lounge, you can't use this in a McDonald's, and you can't use it in your free library Wi-Fi connection for the most part. Number three, they say not to connect the camera to a PC or mobile device that is potentially exposed to virus infections, which means that desktop computer or laptop or mobile phone usually gets attacked and you have to do antivirus clean or anti-spyware clean and all this nonsense then you should not be using your camera with that number four is more of a prevention method which means you disable the camera's network functions when they are not being used which kind of makes sense. So do not leave your Wi-Fi connection on if you're not using the camera for the PTP. And once you've transferred your picture to your device using a USB cable, then disconnect it. And number five, they are asking you to download the official firmware from Canon's website when performing a camera firmware update, which is probably a big issue. And that is because of this little feature from Magic Lantern, like you guys probably know, Magic Lantern is a very popular third party software, which is meant to, let's just say, enhance or delimit your camera. And uh, it has very good reviews. Unfortunately, it also doesn't have any official support from Canon themselves. Magic Lantern does clearly disclose this. By the way, this is not a sponsored video from anyone. I just found the news and I do own a couple of uh, Canon uh, cameras. So I thought I would share this with you and give you my thoughts on what you can do. Now on Magic Lantern's website, I haven't seen any release about this specific issue. So what does that mean if you have one of these cameras or even if you're now worried that maybe the camera that you have, even though it's not listed on the list of vulnerable cameras, maybe they could become vulnerable. So what should you do? It's not clear at this stage whether the vulnerable attacks are on systems which are Windows based or Mac based or Linux based. 
You guys know very well we are doing a one PC to rule them all challenge series and in my recent videos we talked about the difference between Windows based uh, computers and Linux based computers. We haven't done the Mac comparison yet. It is very well known that Linux and even Mac are a lot more secure than any Windows based machines. So the first advice I would give you if you can, if you're going to be using a computer then try not to use a Windows based computer because if there are any vulnerable attacks it would more probably come from a windows based system rather than a linux or a mac os system that should be clear and undisputable saying that though if you've got a windows based computer laptop or even phone if you're still using one of these then you should be making sure that your copy of windows is genuine all the security updates are there all the patches are there and you're using some decent professional preferably paid antivirus and anti-spyware not that it will completely protect you but it is better than using some of the free antivirus and anti-spyware software out there now i had a wi-fi connected uh, dslr camera before it was the 1300d i did not use much of the wi-fi connection but i do use the usb transfer connection for the ptp a lot and at the moment my main computer for the ptp is a windows 10 base machine so what am i going to do i'm not worried for two reasons one my camera is the canon eos 650d always called the t4i in the state this is the rebel series the eos 650d is not in the list and it hasn't got wi-fi so thank god for that even if when i did have my wi-fi able uh, camera i wasn't using the wi-fi connection because for me it wasn't convenient i wasn't doing much social media stuff and i was mostly doing videos and like you know transferring video over wireless connection is not the best thing in the world but the other reason i'm not worried is because i know how i use my computer which is a windows based computer and even though that this is not on the list of the officially vulnerable uh, devices right now i'm not worried because like with any attacks any potential ransomware attacks it starts with you having bad administration if you do not know how to use your device i.e your computer laptop or phone properly if you go on dodgy websites if you don't have security updates if you use dodgy programs constantly if you're always downloading free programs without checking how to actually customize those downloads so that you don't get the express versions because with that comes a lot of bloatware none of which i do so i have never had problems so far thank god and now the other big question what about the competitors from sony from panasonic and the rest are they going to be rejoicing? Well, if I was Sony or Panasonic or one of the other big boys in the club, I would think twice before starting to take the mickey. And if I know anything about the tech world right now, the other big players will also be doing their own testing. So does that mean if you've got one of these mentioned cameras, you should stop using them completely or sell them off or upgrade straight away? Or does that mean you should jump Canon series altogether? No, attacks like this happen all the time time and it's not always publicized i come across many many people that will get ransomware attacks i mean ransomware attacks used to be traditionally through a laptop or a desktop mostly windows based ones where some dodgy international scammer will pretend to be an it consultant or it technician accessing your computer and then say you've got xyz virus let me take control of your whole computer and voila they install ransomware and demand a lot of money before it can get released it's happened a lot and it used to happen a lot more in the Windows XP era, if I'm not mistaken. So that's nothing new. And the fact that right now it's been found by some international team of security experts also is quite reassuring. So if I was one of you and I would own one of these vulnerable devices, I wouldn't over worry right now. This is just a wake up call for much better administration on all your devices, i.e common sense big companies like banks can get hacked despite very advanced security protocols so i wouldn't worry about it too much if i were in your shoes which brings me to one last advice if you're thinking about buying a camera for your youtube stuff or for whatever stuff or two if you're considering upgrading your existing camera which potentially doesn't have wi-fi connection i would say to you rethink twice the fact that i own this eos 650d for now about i've said two years and i've only used a canon 1300d beforehand i can tell you although in theory i understand quite a lot about a dslr you know the iso the f-stop the shutter speed the sensor size the crop factor all this good stuff 
I don't use it to its full potential. I don't do the settings properly all the time. And I know I should because more important than the camera is the lighting, is the microphone, is a story if you're trying to make uh, content for YouTube, for example. It's your whole production value. The camera in and of itself is not what's holding you back to create content if you're a content creator. We've always said this, we're gonna maintain this, and I know this to be so true now. If you give a crappy camera to a professional, they will take excellent pictures and videos. It is not the device that's holding you back. So if you've got one of these vulnerable devices, or even if you've got an older one that hasn't got Wi-Fi, for example, if I was in your shoes, I would be in no hurry to try to upgrade to something else or jump ship to a different make. Instead, I will continue to learn how to use your camera that you have in your own hands available, which isn't costing you anything right now. Because a better camera, not only is it subjectively better, but it's objectively not better. In many cases, it will not improve your quality of content creation, at least not what you think it will. So chill, don't worry about it too much. However, if you were already intending to maybe upgrade for whatever other reasons, if you have the money to splash, go for it. But don't make this security issue become the sole reason for you to jump ship or upgrade. But I do need to end this video with a huge disclaimer. I am not an expert cybersecurity professional, so do not take my advice as absolute truth. I'm just explaining what I would do if I was in your shoes. So do not consider this as advice. Consider this more of my thoughts of what I would do if I was in your shoes. So this is not advice. Don't follow it. Take it with a grain of salt, whatever the heck you want. I just wanted to share my thoughts on it. Thank you so much for watching. We are doing a one PC to rule them all challenge series. The show where I give you full responsibility to decide every aspect of my next PC build for 2019. At the end of the video, we usually give a poll for everyone to vote on and we decide the next episode based on the majority. We're trying to triple boot Windows, Linux and Mac on a single system and we're teaching everything there is to know about PC building. And at the moment for the month of August, we're doing daily uploads. So I will put up a link there, go check it out. And uh, the next video should be about about putting the PC parts which has been assembled outside of the case we're gonna put all of that into the case hopefully so thank you so much for watching and if there's any Amazon links in the description below please use them to support the channel before you go check out this video which is selected for you by YouTube and this troubleshoot series which will help you to understand how to troubleshoot your own computer once again this was Ash from Hilmai Tech helping you go from newbie to techie until next time peace out